Dark Souls. Has it gone too far? For the past year, that's the question I've been asking myself every time I play a game inspired by the Souls series. Since they're kind of like Dark Souls, we'd call one of these games a Souls-like. But for these videos, I don't want the popular stuff. I want the games that I can almost guarantee you have not played or even heard of. Between my own searching and helpful comments from you guys, we have found a lot. So if any of this sounds interesting, this is episode 8 of... Steam Dumpster Diving. But first, I have something pretty cool to share. Bada bing, boom, bang, bap. Look at this, like, ugh. So yeah, I've once again been sponsored by and have partnered with Displate to make a metal poster. And I've used this opportunity to create what I think is one of the coolest pieces of art inspired by the Soul series. The idea was to reimagine Dark Souls coming out during the N64 era or as some sort of tactile toy set, while fitting all the areas into a single structure with loads of gags and references scattered throughout. Kevin's computer and I collaborated on this for months, and like, I'm seriously so proud of how it came out. Genuinely. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Pine, this is so cool. How do I get this for myself? And you know, good news actually, just click on the link in the description. That's it. But yeah, super proud of this. But uh, you know, let's play some games. First up, we got Tyrant's Realm. This is a free game on itch.io and describes itself as a short Souls-like action game with a retro 3D aesthetic. And this one really caught my eye because I'm getting heavy PS1 vibes and the fact that they were able to pull off that look is really cool to me. So just a demo, not a full game, but yeah, let's check it out. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> look at that face! This looks so cool. It actually looks like a PS1 game. Kick. <laughs> this kick is amazing. Can I jump this? Nope. <laughs> oh fuck. Yo, yo, yo. Oof. I'm looking good. I'm looking good. This is how you move when you walk slowly. Just give me a minute. It's really gonna really gonna take my time with this one. All right. What? <laughs> Who is this? Squidward's house is on the loose. Oh. Okay. Oh, he's fast. He's fast. Run, run, run. Oh my god. Hell yeah, victory achieved. That was surprisingly cool. I love this game style. It actually feels like a PS1 game. And I think it'd actually be really cool if this somehow got turned into a more fleshed out full game experience because this is cool. That was a great demo. Morbid the Seven Acolytes. Going by its own description, this is a Lovecraftian, Cronenbergian, horror punk action RPG isometric souls-like. Those are a lot of words. The Steam page also says, if you're interested in the following games, Morbid the Seven Acolytes is for you. So, you know, I think it's, I think it's pretty obvious what their target audience is. Um, you know, let's play it. Oh, sick. This is kind of like a Diablo style inventory. This game is grimy. Look at this, look at this Bloodborne motherfucker. I'm loving these enemies, honestly. Octopus Cthulhu. I think if I just keep moving away from him, he won't attack. <laughs> yeah, he's not attacking me. He only attacks me if I stand still. Why do they give this guy so much health? This is actually ridiculous. This is ridiculous, what the fuck? Thank god he got stuck. I'm just fighting... <laughs> I'm just fighting broccoli now. This, uh, this game's wild, man. Alright, let me tell you what I think. I just beat the game and I clocked in just under five hours. This is the kind of game that breaks my heart because on one hand, it's absolutely gorgeous. Like seriously, I love the art. I love how so many areas feel Bloodborne inspired and there's some seriously great enemy and boss designs. Like just look at this guy, loved his whole thing. And also like this boss, crazy. I don't even wanna say what it is so I don't get flagged, but 
crazy. It certainly lives up to the title of being morbid, but despite how good looking this game can be, I didn't have fun. And the whole experience was weirdly tedious. Exploring rarely felt good because these areas are so big and so sprawling with the same enemies that I just kind of like... I just kind of clocked out at some point where I'm just like, what, what, what's going on here? What are we doing? And the combat really just does not feel good. The best word I can use to describe it would be sloppy. The way you deal with enemies is you get one hit in and then roll away, or you can just use the parry system, which is weirdly forgiving to the point where you won't even get hit if it's an enemy you can parry. Also, due to the perspective that this game shows, a lot of enemies and bosses can only attack when you're to the left or right of them. So if you just move up or down above the enemies, they actually can't hit you and they won't even attack. This is such a glaring oversight, I can't help but wonder why they didn't try to come up with a better solution than just leave it as is, because it kind of messes with the whole game. It's such a shame to me, because I think this game is gorgeous, has some really great ideas, but playing it typically feels kind of bad and more tedious than it ought to. I don't want to say this game is bad, but I will say I didn't have fun, so make of that what you will. Alright, next up we got Blue Fire. I saw a few people mention this game and they compare it to Hollow Knight, and Hollow Knight is often compared to Dark Souls, so through the transitive property, I think this game can qualify for this video. Feel free to disagree, but I love 3D platformers, so let's just play it. Ooh. I can already tell, two seconds, running around, jumping, attacking. This feels good. Dash with right trigger, oh. Wait, we got a dash. I can already tell. I can already tell this is a good game. Oh man, I love this little guy. Look at him. Look at this little guy. And we got we got a Dark Souls boss. Yep. Okay. Oh fuck. This music though. We got shield. We got the Smash Bros. Shield. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you can just close yourself with the chest. Oh, you can parry? This game has a parry. This is like the secret areas in Mario Sunshine, that kind of thing. Wait, that's literally what this is. That's awesome. Wait, this item screen is literally Breath of the Wild. <laughs> this is actually just Breath of the Wild. This is hilarious. Oh, is this like a bonfire checkpoint? Interesting, so you have to like pay currency to unlock checkpoints. Oh, <gasps> wait, you can just do emotes. This is... This is way too- oh my god, this is way too cute. Dude, I already know I'm gonna play this whole fucking game. Hey, so I actually did play this whole fucking game, and um, it's fun. Uh, I actually liked it enough to not only beat it, but do all of the optional side content. And it took me around eight and a half hours, maybe nine hours. It has a lot of charm, and you know, by the end of the game, once you have like the double jump and the wall jumping and the wall running, all that stuff, it feels good, and... It's just a fun platformer. This game is basically a hat in time mixed with Hollow Knight with a bit of like a Souls influence and vibe. So if 3D indie platformers appeal to you like at all, you really need to give this game a shot, I think. It's kind of a crime that this game is only sitting at 300 reviews. Uh, one thing I do want to note though, if you do actually play this game, there are like some bonus void areas. I think I showed one of them earlier. Most of them are pretty fun, but a couple of them definitely cross the line in terms of difficulty and the precision that they demand given the control scheme they're not the most fun for that reason like i did beat them all and they are optional but if you are going to play this game just keep that in mind and be prepared but yeah i had a lot of fun with this and if you are into 3d platformers you need to try it next up we got trials of argolis this is a first person melee combat boss rush and i found this thanks to someone commenting saying this game looked kind of soulsy and recommending i check it out so here we are it's been out since december and it only has four reviews and unless this game is just completely terrible that feels like a shame so let's check it out why is my guy so short i, I come up to this dude's belly button Dodge through slash into an attack to make your opponent stress out. Attacking stressed opponents restores some HP. Stressed? You know, to be fair, if some dude just like phased through my sword by like dodging through it, I'd be pretty stressed out too. <laughs> my character's so short. I'm just like, <laughs> look at this. Whoa, okay. No! Oh my god, I have one health. I have one health. Ooh, no! 
I like how I just have like sweat on my screen constantly. Like, I think that's what it's supposed to be. I'm making this guy sweat and then just like, it, the screen just gets covered in it. <laughs> what a weird mechanic. Whew. Perish. Okay. Okay, um... What do I do? Okay, hold on, hold on. I get him to punch this thing like he like hurts his hand, right? Is that it? Yeah, there we go. Stranded fisherman. I feel like this shouldn't be a boss. This is just a guy with a paddle. Wait, did he just get... <laughs> I should have ever seen it in my life. <laughs> I can't even. Uh... Wait, was he throwing at me? He's throwing little bobbers at me. Oh my god. I, this game was starting to lose me a little bit, but it reeled me right back in. This guy has two beehives on his hands. They both do, actually. Interesting. Yo. That's what I'm talking about. Good move, buddy. Where are you going? What? Did I win? What? <gasps> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he turned into a whale. I can't even see anything. I've said in the past that I'm not really a fan of boss rush games, and this one's no different. Like, it's fine. It gets the job done, you know? And I think this was even made by just one guy, so that's always impressive to me. I do wish there was a bit more to it, though, mechanically. One big thing I would have done differently, though, if I was the developer, is I would have leaned more into the comedy angle, because the rowboat boss and the whale boss, genuinely funny, and huge highlights for the game. But the rest of the bosses are just kind of like guys with big weapons, and I don't know. They didn't really do anything for me. But either way, I think it definitely deserves better than four Steam reviews, you know? Going under. So before anyone says anything, I'm well aware that this is kind of a stretch to call a Souls like. However, it has a dodge roll, melee weapons, and boss fights, so let's just say it counts so I can show off a cool game. This is a roguelike, but instead of being a hero exploring dungeons, you're an unpaid intern exploring failed tech startups. In this world, when a business fails, all the employees turn into monsters relating to that business, including goblins, skeletons, and demons. Incredible premise, right? This game also does the impossible. It's funny. Like, actually funny. The entire game is a satire of tech startups and modern workplaces, and everything in the game supports that satire. And I mean everything. Even the art style of the game itself is a parody of the Allegria style I'm sure you've seen tons of companies use. It's a perfect fit for this. Keep in mind though, it's not just the satire that's funny. Combat encounters are also funny in a slapstick kind of way. Send a goblin flying across the room, run over enemies in a car, and attack demons with an eggplant emoji. There's just a lot of charm here. But Pine, I'm a gamer. What about the gameplay? Is it good? And yeah, it is actually, and it's why I was interested in this game in the first place. So it's a bit reductive to say it has the Breath of the Wild weapon breaking system, but it has the Breath of the Wild weapon breaking system. It works really well though, because every weapon breaks pretty quickly, so there's this fast paced and frenetic energy to every fight as you're dodging around, swinging swords, and throwing office supplies at enemies. It is worth noting though that runs will eventually blend together because there's just not that same level of variety that you might find in other roguelikes. And for the longest time, I thought that in order for a roguelike to succeed and be quote unquote good, it needed to be the kind of game that could feasibly support someone wanting to put in a playtime in the triple digits. However, Going Under has made me reconsider that a bit. If you were to compare it to something like Hades in terms of build variety and potential depth to the combat, it doesn't really come close to measuring up. But I think that's okay. This game is oozing with so much personality, humor, and style that it doesn't need that same level of complexity to still be worthwhile and fun. The bigger focus on story makes this a good fit. But yeah, easy recommend, this game is getting slept on big time. All right, next we got Dark Throne. This is only $1, so I feel like I kinda, kinda gotta try it. One of the first reviews says, LOL, somebody liked Dark Souls a bit too much, huh? What will come next? No Man's Sky, the platformer? Um, bit of a weird reference there, but this did make me curious for why he thinks the creator liked Dark Souls so much. So yeah, let's check it out. This idle animation is a little, a little fast, you know? It's like I'm a dog panting really hard. 
Achievement unlocked. You killed of the first night. All right. It's weird. My my stamina recovers so quickly that like I can literally just spam attacks and it never even goes down. Oh, ent. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Bro, what do I... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Am I missing something? Yeah, I'm looking at the controls here. There's no, like, roll button. My only defensive option is to block, which takes up most of my stamina bar. Okay, stab, jump. No, that didn't work. How are you supposed to beat this boss? <laughs> what? I'm just gonna spam strong attacks and keep spamming magic shield. and Maybe I'll kill him in time. <gasps> Holy fuck, I got it. All right, we're in uncharted territory. It's very possible no one has ever gotten this far. I'm gonna beat this game. I'm gonna beat this fucking game. Souls like dragon. What the <laughs> it's, it's time. Oh my god. What is this JPEG dragon? This game isn't real. Why am I missing? Die, 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 die. Yes, you killed dragon. Here we go. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <sighs> Just gotta keep walking away slowly and poking. That's <laughs> that's the only thing that works. Okay, just go. Just go. Yes! King Defector. Okay, here we go. The old poke strats. I like how every boss feels like I have to exploit the game itself to even, like, attempt it. One shot! Wait, I figured it out. I figured it out. You just gotta stay <laughs> inside of him. <laughs> That's the trick. His hitbox only goes in front of him. <sighs> Wait. <laughs> I just went from level 25 to 41. <laughs> Am I just gonna keep getting achievements for every level? Yep. <sighs> Wait, did I win? Was that it? Yeah. You know, that was that was definitely a video game. You know, okay, for real, I'm gonna assume this was someone younger, and this was like their first attempt at ever making a game. Um, you shouldn't play this, but like, hey, I admire the effort. Kronos Before the Ashes. This is kind of a weird one, so let's talk about it. It came out in December 2020, but, and the Steam page doesn't mention this, this game is actually a re-release port of the Oculus Rift exclusive Kronos from 2016. Now I know most of you are already rolling your eyes at the phrase Oculus Rift exclusive, and you know, fair. However, this version of the game had a very unique fixed camera perspective, kind of reminiscent of old Resident Evil games. And I think this is pretty neat. I haven't seen this used for a Souls-like game before, and I think it has potential. But unfortunately, this was removed in the Steam version in favor of the typical behind-the-back camera. I understand why they removed this, but it's ultimately a shame. So I hope someone else tries this idea again sometime. The one gimmick that did remain, though, is the aging mechanic. It's featured pretty prominently in the advertising, and basically every time you die, your character gets one year older. They even frame this as being able to affect character builds because as you get older, leveling up strength becomes more expensive, but leveling up arcane becomes less expensive. On paper, this sounds like an interesting enough gimmick, but let me tell you that with my time spent playing the game, it never actually affected anything. All that really changed is my character got a beard eventually. In order for this change in stat point costs to even become a thing, you'd have to die at least 40 times so your character would be old enough. Also, the game caps your age at 80, and then you just stop aging. Now in my opinion, this is a cop-out. I think they should have deleted your save file at that point. Would this make the game less fun? Probably, yes, very much so, but I think you ought to commit a little harder if you're going for a mechanic like this. Or at the very least, have it affect gameplay outside of stat bonuses and penalties. So looking at this game, I bet some of you are like, hold on, why does this look so familiar? And that's because it's made by the same devs who made Remnant from the Ashes, and they wound up reusing a lot of the assets in this game for Remnant. Though interestingly, they did justify this by having Remnant be an in-universe sequel. But yeah, I think overall, this game looks pretty good and has some creative enemy designs. As for actually playing the game though, I don't really know what to say. It's kind of clunky and a bit slow, but overall it's fine. It's 
functional. I don't really have any strong feelings about it. This game has by the numbers soulsy combat without really doing anything to give it its own spin. I will say though that it has a few puzzles here and there and they are definitely the highlight of the experience. I actually wish there were significantly less combat so there could be more of a focus on some of the clever ideas on display. Except this sliding puzzle near the end. This is where I had the realization that I didn't actually care enough to finish the last hour or so of the game. But anyway, I'd describe this game as a very middling experience and that combined with the $30 price tag makes it a pretty easy pass for me. Alright, next up we got Dragon Extinction. I dug pretty deep to find this one, just kind of found it by browsing around on Steam for a while. It is early access, which is always, you know, I'm always kind of wary of when it comes to these kinds of games. But you know, you never know, you never know. One thing that's kind of strange that I want to point out real quick is that this game has so many screenshots on the Steam page. Like, look at this. It has 80. I counted. Um. Yeah, anyway, let's play the game. Uh, we have three players online. All right, here's my guy. Hunt 20 animals, hunt five deer, or defeat 10 bandits. Well, this one sounds less, less bad. There he goes. Hunt 20 animals. I'm just running around killing 20 raccoons like it's an MMO. This is, um, this is something. All right, good, good quest. Can I fight dragons now? So my options for quests are 10 bandits, 10 animals, and one cougar, or I can do 10 bandits, 10 animals, and a cougar. Um, I think we've seen it all. There's nothing else to this game. It's just like empty levels with random enemies thrown around. What? He just one-shot me. This is the trick. I have to use... I use the cliff. I use this little rock here. Just gotta fuck up his pathfinding. This is how I win. Yes! Yes! Hunt one bear. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah, sure, I'll take this. This is so much better than the hunt 25 raccoons quests I've been getting. Alright, let's go, baby. Wow, that's a lot of damage, buddy. That's a lot of damage. Okay. Can I break these? Nine times out of ten, if a game has some pots on the ground and you cannot break them, it's probably a bad game. It's true. <sighs> I think I'm done. Yeah, I think this game is just probably not for me. Um, maybe it does get better, but I don't feel like waiting to find out. All right, for the rest of the video, I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of the artistic decisions and references in this poster. And you know, even if you're not interested in buying it, which is totally fine, I think you might still be curious about some of the decisions I made and why I made them and that kind of thing. So this one was actually a lot more challenging than the last one because Demon Souls only has six zones if you count the Nexus, whereas Dark Souls has a lot more. And on top of that, I wanted the areas to roughly line up geographically. You know, so areas that are underground, I wanted to actually be underground and areas that are up high want them to be up high. It all like roughly lines up which was harder than you might think. I think we kind of nailed it. Kevin nailed it. He did a great job. Um, and now let's talk about some of the references. This is my favorite one right here. It's supposed to be like a Mario 64 reference, you know, like where he like burns himself and like goes flying off the lava. And speaking of Mario, you know, you have the little painting from Mario 64 for the painted world. This might be my favorite guy. Um, this little mushroom guy fishing. I really like him. And also for Darker Garden, I, you know, I had to do Sif and Artorius, but I thought, you know what? They deserve a break. You know, Artorius has been through so much he should just be able to hang out and play frisbee with Sif. Then below that we have the catacombs and the idea with this one was Gravelord Nito is kind of like a trench coat salesman. Kind of think like Resident Evil 4 vibes. Uh, New Londo. New Londo is kind of a nightmare with all the ghosts. So I thought fittingly uh, the knight should also be having a bad time. Uh, right here is also my, my other favorite reference we put in. I think this is hilarious and I'm not going to say it, but I hope everyone gets this reference. Then above that you have Undeadburg in the parish. Um, a lot of good stuff going on here. Praise in the sun. Solar give him the thumbs up. I love that interaction. Then above that, you got Andre pumping iron, you know, because how else is he going to get those kind of muscles? You know, this is a Dark Souls one piece, so I kind of, I couldn't resist, you know, including the channeler with the sunglasses. I feel like I kind of had to do that. But yeah, I'm going to cut myself off here so I don't keep talking for too long. Again, if you want to get this for yourself, the link is in the description and there's a discount as well if you use that link. Super proud again of how it came out. And, you know, if you're still watching, thank you. You know, I hope this was fun to listen to me talk about what I put into the poster. Even if you're not getting it, 
again, totally fine. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it. Um, leave me game suggestions if you're still watching and have game suggestions for me. And you know, not just Souls-like games. If you find like a hidden gem kind of game, feel free to recommend that to me too. I, I wanna know. Thank you again and uh, have a good one guys.